Guys, this is Brian with Turf Mechanic. Have you ever considered pruning your grass? Going out to your lawn and pruning it. It's a silly concept, but it's a silly word to use. That's why we always call it cutting the grass or mowing the grass. But really, it's the same exact thing. I don't care if you go into the garden with a pair of pruning shears and trim your tomato plant to make it grow in the shape that you want. Maybe prune your tree so that it doesn't get all gangly. When we're cutting our grass with our lawn mowers, we are pruning it. We are trying to tell the grass to grow in a way that is acceptable and desirable from us, from our perspective. Pruning our grass or mowing our lawns, this is one of the most important steps that we can take to fix our lawn. This video is part of my Fix Your Lawn series. I have three other videos that precede this, having to do with aeration, fertilizing, weed kill, weed prevention. This is one of the most important steps of them all because if you omit everything cutting the grass and keeping water on it is pretty much as fundamental as it gets but there's more to say about it i've got seven things for you to keep in mind reasons to cut your grass two times every week if you want to fix your lawn please consider cutting your grass two times every single week. Let's go into all seven of them here and we're gonna start with the most obvious one of them all. If we're cutting the grass every three or four days, twice a week, then the grass is never gonna get overgrown. It literally will never grow too much. And you're never gonna look at your lawn and say, wow, that's way too tall. When it never gets overgrown, then that means when we cut it, we're never cutting off more than a third of the grass blade. I don't care which lawnmower you have, if you still have the manual, you'll open it up and somewhere in that manual, it's gonna tell you, don't ever cut more than a third of your grass blade off at any one time. It's universal, it's why we call it the one third rule. If you cut your grass every three or four days, you're never gonna break this rule, unless you're cutting your grass for like a putting green, which I don't recommend. When we abide by the one third rule, our grass does not get stressed out very much. We're always cutting into the leaf tissue and not below the leaf tissue. The grass doesn't really like being cut down onto the stem, certainly not down to the crown. So if we're always cutting just a little bit off at the top, it's always going to perform very well. It's also never gonna get overgrown, which means point number two, if you have a mulchy lawnmower, that mulchy lawnmower is never gonna get bogged down. It's never going to look at the grass and say, that's too much grass for me to mulch at once, but I'll give it a try. You're always going to be able to mulch it just fine. As your mower goes over it, you're not gonna be able to see any of the clippings. They're all just gonna reassimilate right back into the soil, just under the turf canopy. When grass gets overgrown, let's call it like day seven to 10 to 14, and then we try to mulch it, then problems happen. Uh, we lose airflow under the mower because there's just too much grass and things clump and you end up getting like long streaks of dead grass on your ground which mulch it down. There's lots of bad things that can happen with doing that. But your mulching mowers are simply going to perform better. Third point, when those clippings go down onto the ground from a mulching mower, they are going to easily reassimilate back into the soil profile. The nutrient density of those grass uh, cuttings are going to be able to refeed the lawn over the coming season, over the coming months and maybe even years, depending on what the nutrient is. This is a concept called nutrient cycling, and there are some reasons to say it's not that big of a deal, but honestly, when you have to put a bag on your lawnmower and then figure out what to do with the clippings afterwards, mulching them back into the lawn and just calling it nutrient cycling is pretty easy. You basically just don't ever have to think about it. Now, the fourth point here is as we're cutting the grass very regularly, every three to four days, then we're never going to be surprised when our lawnmower hits sticks and rocks and pine cones and any other random things that get deposited onto the lawn in between mowing sessions. When we can see them, because the lawn isn't overgrown, we can pick those things up and that's gonna save our lawnmower blade especially if we could take the time to sharpen that mower blade every now and then, then our mower blade is going to always be sharp and it's going to cut our grass cleaner, which means our grass is gonna be more resistant to disease and fungal threats. We don't want disease entering our grass plant and if we're cutting that grass with a mower blade that's damaged or just plain dull, uh, we're always going to be introducing extra pathways. We're gonna have afraid tips on the grass blades. 
and those frayed tips is going to end up you're going to see this like kind of tan haze to your grass the next day because that frayed portion of the grass kind of dries out and it's just kind of white on top we don't want that sharpen your mower blade and then you're never really going to hit anything you can clean your yard up much easier before you go and mow now also having to do with cutting those tips off this is getting more into the science of how plants grow the tip of a grass plant almost always comes to this little point some version of a point almost like an arrowhead or a boat shaped tip and that point is basically the pinnacle of a plant it's like the tippy top of a tree or any other plant in the garden plants want to grow towards the pinnacle and with a grass plant it's no different if we allow the grass to grow for as long as it grows before it folds over on itself it's going to be following the pinnacle northward upward not north but up towards the sky and that's because of plant hormones that are released in the tip of the grass blade if we're constantly cutting the tip of the grass blade off then we're not going to be allowing the grass to release their growth hormones to shoot upwards it's always going to have the little flat just like when you cut a grass blade you've got a little flat top there the tip is gone this is what my pruning comment is getting at because we cut that tip off and now we are stimulating the growth that would have gone upwards and it's going to start growing laterally it will tiller out more it will grow more rhizomes it will more grow more stolons the blades themselves will widen and thicken up basically when we cut it frequently we're going to be training the grass to not go tall but to go wide thick and dense and that's really what anyone with a lawn wants a dense turf certainly we want it green but even when it's dormant in the month of January we still want it dense otherwise we're walking around in mud right after the snow melts now if you have weeds in your lawn cutting your lawn frequently is also going to help that situation whether you put weed preventative or weed killers down weeds almost all of them not all of them but many of them want to grow straight up they want to go straight up really tall get above everything put on a big flower and seed head and spread their seed if we constantly cut them we never let them go up then they weaken and weaken and weaken and maybe they will put on seeds but they they won't put on as many seeds and they certainly won't put on as many flower heads and as our grass thickens up and spreads into their spaces they will eventually that you'll eventually have fewer weeds season over season it just by cutting them down just by never letting those weeds grow up the way that they want to if you do have some of those weeds then that's when I do recommend putting on the bagger on your mower that way every single time you mow you can suck up all those seed heads into the bag and discard them properly that way the seed heads never go onto the lawn the weed itself never really matures into the plant that it wants to be your grass widens and thickens up and uh and overtakes a space that the weeds want to grow in and over the years you end up having significantly fewer weeds you're not going to get rid of them all by simply mowing the lawn but man you're going to make a huge difference a bigger difference than you believe is possible now the last main point here that I want to talk about in terms of cutting your grass regularly is man it just looks a lot better I don't care who you are I don't care who you're trying to impress it could be your neighbors it could be your spouse it could be yourself this could be a game against yourself if you want to have some pride in your lawn your property your house this is a great way to do it it's a great home hobby to take on and cutting the grass can be pretty good exercise as well fix your lawn does it have to happen in one season can it happen in five seasons can it happen in six months all of these are options but no matter what you have to really nail this step if you want to fix your lawn now up here in the corner I've got links to the playlist for the fix your lawn series as well as the next video in this series that will come out very soon depending on when you're watching it it might be out already make sure to use that comment box and there are relevant links in the description below make sure to use those links I handpick them for your benefit